So one of the things I want you to get from lecture, from this chapter, reading your textbook, maybe you already knew it, but <laughs> what causes, what gives, what gives us four seasons? What gives us our winter, spring, um, summer, and fall? And it has to do specifically with the Earth's tilted axis of rotation. Okay, that's my Earth's tilted axis of rotation. It's kind of fun because we will ultimately be talking about the other um, uh, planets in our solar system, and one of the things we'll look for is do they does their axis that they rotate on, does it tilt relative to being perpendicular to the, the ecliptic? And if it does, they have seasons. There you go. It's, it's that easy. So, but I want to give you a sense of why it's that tilted Earth's axis of rotation that gives us seasons. So here's a figure from your textbook. I'm going to kind of hone in on different parts of it because it's kind of a busy uh, figure. Um, so here we see the Earth's tilted axis of rotation. Okay, so there's the North Pole and there's the South Pole. And the Earth is spinning. As you're looking down at the North it's Pole, it's spinning uh, counterclockwise. Okay, and it is orbiting the sun counterclockwise. So let me kind of look at a different place here. The thing about its tilt, and I, I wish I could kind of show you in the classroom, it's easier. But look to see if you can see this tilt maintained as the Earth orbits the sun. Let's kind of shrink this down. So we're showing the Earth uh, three months apart as it orbits the sun. So um, its tilted axis of rotation is here here, oops, let me, so this is first, and it goes this way, uh, here's the tilted axis of rotation, okay, this would actually be summer in the northern hemisphere, okay, this would be uh, fall in the northern hemisphere, and this would be um, winter in the northern hemisphere, and this would be my favorite time, spring in the northern hemisphere, let me go back to summer. And I tried to draw the, the, the axis, that tilted axis of rotation as it is for the Earth as it orbits the Sun. So I like what your author's done then. Kind of honed in here uh, when it is, um, this would be around June 21st. It is actually, uh, we have two uh, solstices. Um, I'll just put S for solstices. We have, there's a solstice over here, summer solstice. And over here, this is the winter solstice. We have two equinoxes. I'll put an equinox here. This actually, since it's between summer and winter, we call that the fall equinox. And we have another equinox over here. It's a spring equinox. So if we kind of focus on our summer solstice, about June 21st, right? Notice that um, you can see uh, this line right here. That's the equator. You can maybe kind of see the tilted axis of rotation. This person up here is really happy and warm. This person down here is cold. <laughs> so if you separate northern hemisphere from the southern hemisphere, you probably already know this, but I want to reinforce that our seasons are swapped. So even though we call this the summer solstice, summer solstice, okay, notice that for the northern hemisphere, it's the summer solstice for the southern hemisphere. Actually, it would be the winter solstice. Okay, I don't know if that, if that works for you. And let's look uh, six months later at the other solstice over here. This happens December 21st. So six months later, and it's kind of neat because uh, what your author's done is the detail here. Can you see that actually in the winter solstice we have a shadow? Okay, northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere. This is our winter solstice. Okay, and it happens, and I have a table coming up. It happens on December 21st-ish. Okay, so, and I have a few slides uh, just to kind of emphasize kind of the consequences of the tilt there. Okay. One is that the more, the more of a tilt you have, what we say, the, the less direct the energy is to that object. So um, if I were to be able to animate these, and I, and I might, I might animate them and go ahead and, and post them and make them part of this playlist. But um, what your author's done here is to take this hand 
and here it's flush relative to the heat source and it's hot okay and then take the hand and turn it so if the hand instead of going like like this relative to the heat source if it's turned like this relative to the heat source this is my light bulb over here okay this is hot more direct and this is less direct this is cooler okay so anytime you have for instance you saw those shadows for the southern hemisphere in um, in June and for the northern hemisphere in December those shadows represent show you kind of the indirectness of the sun's rays um, so that's being shown over here um, and I'll like I said I'll probably try to find those animations and capture them playlist so I put together this um, this little uh, table I'm gonna hide that last column for now this little table that shows you those uh, four important uh, positions as the Sun excuse me as the earth orbits the Sun four important positions and you probably are already very familiar with these the winter solstice um, in the northern hemisphere occurs December 21st 22nd and if you are actually the line of latitude that's 66 and a third degrees north is called the Arctic Circle if you are north of the Arctic Circle you will have no daylight hours and actually not only is it the the indirectness of the sun's rays but it's the number of, of hours you get to see the sun that affects the temperature and makes our winter season like that okay so um, position one position two uh, three months later you are at one of the two equinoxes you're at the spring equinox or vernal equinox and all latitudes the reason they call it an equinox actually is all latitudes get um, equal hour of daylight and nighttime so that includes um, north of the Arctic Circle then uh, three months yeah, three months later you are June 21st 22nd um, if you are above the Arctic Circle if you've ever seen the land of where the Sun does not set okay um, you get daylight it's not it's not nighttime okay um, it's kind of a cool thing uh, summer solstice in the northern hemisphere um, and then uh, three months later you are at another equal equinox okay September 22nd 23rd um, and there you get um, half of your half of your day is daylight so let me go ahead and show you this last column then this last column says what if you're in the southern hemisphere for those uh, the winter solstice, vernal equinox, summer solstice, and autumnal equinox. Notice that actually um, in, the, in the southern hemisphere, if you are close to the south pole, which is what's trying to indicate here, in, when we are having winter, okay, if you're in the southern hemisphere near the southern, south pole, um, if we're having winter, you're having summer, okay? The equinoxes are the same, but notice right here, this actually is when we're having summer, notice that um, they're having winter down there there's a I can't remember what the name of the movie is but vampires love that right okay so there is kind of a neat phenomenon and it makes sense that um, throughout the year um, as we approach our uh, winter solstice for example as we approach the winter solstice um, the Sun gets lower and lower in the daytime sky like at noon that's how high it gets up okay and this at the summer solstice it's very high in the sky and it has to do with the tilted axis Earth's tilted axis of rotation and the ecliptic the Sun following the ecliptic so one of the things um, um, apparently when people are asked what causes seasons they oftentimes come up with well in the summertime we're closest to the Sun and in the winter time we're furthest from the sun so I'll kind of refer you to it might be hard for you to see hmm, let's see. One. yeah okay um, and honestly um, there is a difference when we're closest to the sun and when we're farthest from the sun I know this is a little blurry so just bear with me but hopefully you see this is the sun and we kind of see the earth 
at four different positions in, throughout the year as it, as it orbits the sun. And you see this January 3rd? Actually, January 3rd is when the Earth is closest. We call that perihelion. And I think it's a term coming up. Um, I can't remember if it's Unit 1 or Unit 2. But perihelion, I hope you can read that, is um, when actually um, this distance is smallest. And um, aphelion is when the, the Earth is farthest uh, from the Sun, and that happens around July 4th. So it's not that we're closer to, you know, around June 20, 21st, the summer solstice in the Northern Hemisphere. It's not because we're closer, because actually we're the furthest. So, like the slide says, it's it, it in the uh, distance between the Earth and the Sun, and it just really doesn't make much of a difference with regard to the heat that we get. So one last thing I want to talk about with regard to the Earth um, orbiting the Sun. The Earth orbits the Sun and its axis of rotation is tilted. We talked about that 23 and a half degree tilt. And it keeps that tilt, but there's something called precession. And precession means that that tilt is actually going to, going to change the direction. It's going to keep the 23 and a half degrees, but it's going to what we say precess and point to a different different region of the sky okay so and it's and it's like a physics thing it's kind of like a top being kind of top heavy or not kind of kind of losing a little bit of its of its spin I don't know wobbling so um, we end up with this kind of coning sort of shape of our axis of rotation and what the practical point that has on um, on us and by the way, you see the, 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 the number of years, 26,000 years up here. What that means is that our, our axis of rotation, um, right now, our north pole is pointing towards Polaris. But our pole star hasn't always been Polaris. So, for instance, you kind of see um, a pole star over here. I think it's called Thuban, okay, over here. That used to be, in the northern hemisphere, what we would look to in the center of the bullseye of all of our stars as they, throughout the night, as they um, go counterclockwise. Okay, so precession. And it, it has um, a consequence because actually the, um, the locations of the equinoxes have changed then throughout the course of 26,000 years.